Okay, so these are the cabinets where we keep these bones and all our other fossils. This is uh, an example of how they were kept. This is a vertebra and some toe bones and some feet bones and some, some of his finger bones. This is equivalent of this little knuckle bone on me. Uh, again, we've got lots of bones from D. This is a lot of foot bones. We've got lots of cabinets full of bones. We got more over here and more here. We've got about 200 complete bones and then a numerous parts and pieces that might not be identifiable. This is kind of a very old detective work. Detectives like find out why he died and how he died 13,000 years ago. We actually sent some samples of uh, charcoal and bone and some of the soil to three different labs to have them dated. And we were able to guesstimate pretty well that D died about 13,000 years ago, which is roughly 1,000 years before humans showed up. And while we were digging, we actually looked for arrowheads and tool marks on the bones, and we found nothing of the sort. So we're pretty sure he never saw any humans in his life. D. Zimmerscheid was driving a bulldozer, making a uh, oil well platform, and he came across some bones. And he actually jumped off his bulldozer, said, wow, this is unusual. And to make a long story short, the Tate Museum ended up digging up the mammoth. And we took us two summers. We took five, week, five weeks at a time to go collect this stuff. And after two years, we did not have the skull. But we found it this past summer by doing a little scientific uh, detective work and digging with a backhoe. And so this is a skull. This is where the brain would be. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but this is his nose hole. Yeah. Eyes would have fit in here. There's another one on the other side. And these two long things here would support his tusks. And we got one tusk the first year we were out there, and it's a four and a half feet long. And we got another tusk this past summer right next to this thing. And that tusk is complete, and it's about 11 and a half feet long. So it's a big tusk. This guy was a big animal, and he was fairly old when he died. We know that because his lower jaw has some very worn out teeth in him. So this is the lower jaw. It's missing a lot of the back end. It took quite a beating before he was uh, buried. This is uh, the two teeth. Here's one, here's the other. Um, they're very small, especially for an animal this size. And normally there would be a second tooth in behind him waiting to replace this tooth, but this guy doesn't have it. So we're pretty sure that he was on his last set of teeth. And if we look at this thing here, this is a cast of a tooth from the uh, mammoth and the Hot Springs Mammoth site, where all their mammoths, most of their mammoths are young males. This is considerably larger than what D had. So what we think is that, imagine this, this thing being worn down as he chews and chews and chews till he has approximately this much of the tooth left. Then the chewing surface is a lot smaller. So we think he's on his last tooth. He's actually worn it down to almost nothing and he probably died one fine winter day, being an old gummer, probably just couldn't find enough food and couldn't chew enough of his food. Now this thing here looks like a piece of scrap, but it's actually also a mammoth tooth. This is one of Dee's teeth. We found this kind of uh, within his uh, ribs and vertebrae the area. So we think that this, we found two of them. We think that he swallowed possibly swallowed his last teeth on the upper side, on his upper, upper uh, jaw, and that they sat in his belly for a long time. Both of these are very delicate, and the preservation is very different than all the other bones. So we have reason to suspect that they were digested in his stomach for a while. And when we get to cleaning up the bottom side of the skull where the teeth should be, we'll know if that theory is right. If you find teeth in his skull, then maybe that theory is wrong. If we find empty holes where his sockets are, then that's probably what happened. But that's a future discovery. So this is a model of what our mammoth would look like. This is one of his backbones, a vertebra. We're just stacked up like this with a bunch more backbones here and a bunch more over there. On this model, it'd be one of these guys that I'm holding it by right now. So this would be make the top of the hump on top of his shoulders. And we are estimating that this feller probably stood about between 11 and a half and 13 and a half feet tall when we get them all put back together. And over here, this is one of the bones that the bulldozer hit. And it's one of the few vertebrae that are really broken. But we're pretty sure that this actually fits on here somewhere. We just can't 
make the actual match. Maybe someday we'll figure it out. Maybe someday we'll find the missing pieces. We have drawers and drawers full of parts that got hit by the bulldozer. So this, this is a sandbox we use for gluing bones. The idea being that instead of when we glue bones together, instead of holding them together while the glue sets, we can stuff a bone in here in the sandbox, pretend this is a bone. We can stick a piece in there. This is the piece that fits on top. And we make it so that it just balances on there. And then you put a little glue on the bottom, balance your bone, and walk away and let the glue dry. And this is what I've done with the, the radius and ulna here, which are the front of the leg on this model. It would be these two bones right here. Uh, D is kind of unusual, our mammoth, because the radius on Nalna, which are supposed to be two separate bones, are actually fused as one. That is, he had some, some kind of problems with his bones, then they healed as, as a unit instead of two bones. And we think he probably had some good pain when he was walking in his front arm. Uh, this is the radius ulna, and it was found in several pieces out in the field. It's one of the few bones that really was beat up. And we are now starting to glue it all back together, and we're going to reconstruct the parts that are missing in here, which is what we're currently working on. So most of the bones that I've showed you were prepped by uh, myself and museum volunteers, as well as Casper College work-study students, and including a few volunteer students who came in and on their spare time, basically they clean these bones. And these things are fairly easy to clean. We clean them with a toothbrush and water or a toothbrush and acetone if they've got too much uh, plastic on them. We basically put a plastic on them in the field to, to keep them in shape so they don't fall apart. So when we get them back to the lab, we have to take that plastic off and fill the cracks with glue and stuff. So Casper High School students as well would come in in the afternoons after school. So this is a, uh, field, a map of the bones as they were found in the field. And then we had one of our work-study students, Ali Amzal, who is now in Chicago drew this map out from the field maps we made. And this shows basically where all the bones were. Each inch about like this is a meter on this map. So you can see here that we've got actually quite a large quarry that we dug for this thing. Here, this is the initial discovery area, the pelvis. These are the two pelvis bones. This is what was hit by the bulldozer, along with a few of the ribs. And as soon as we started digging this area, we found lots and lots of bones, ribs, vertebrae. Realized we had a pretty good skeleton that we'd have to come back. And it took us a little negotiating with the landowners and the BLM, the oil companies that were drilling the well. And we got permission to collect this thing. We got a total of 309 bones, which includes many unidentifiable chips, but probably about 200 identifiable and fairly complete bones. If you follow the map bones all the way down the end, and I'm just going to keep unrolling and moving the map. Remember, each inch is a meter. Way down here is where we found the lower jaw. And then you'll notice that the bones kind of ran out over here. So by the time we got past the lower jaw to some of these smaller toe bones, we were finding one bone per day with a crew of 10 of us. So we were getting into the area of diminishing returns there. This whole, this whole map will eventually go on display at Dee's feet in the museum. <laughs>